Good morning, everyone. My name is Dan Kahn. I'm the executive director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. I would like to uh, particularly thank Arpit and uh, Phil Robb and uh, Jill and the entire Elf Events team for putting together this event. It's been incredibly productive three days for me. A uh, really interesting group of folks here that uh, I've been able to engage with and have a ton of, of meetings. Uh, for the last six months, networking has been a major new focus for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. We're best known for hosting Kubernetes, uh, and we have had a lot of success in the cloud and in enterprise software computing, uh, but we see telecoms as the next uh, big market to go after. And so uh, Arpit and I have been uh, literally circling the world together, doing a road show in China, and then a uh, booth together at Mobile World Congress and such, but it's been a great collaboration. So uh, I think everyone is familiar with Kubernetes at this point. It was originally uh, created by Google, but has now had major contributions from Red Hat, from uh, Microsoft, from Huawei, from uh, really all the companies, the 17 platinum members uh, listed at the bottom here, and now hundreds of other companies, thousands of other developers. But that's just one of the projects in uh, CNCF. We now have five graduated projects and 16 incubating that are um, a little less mature but still being used in production by uh, hundreds of companies around the world. So CNCF has now um, just crossed over 390 uh, members. That's up from 28 when we launched just a little bit more than three years ago. And uh, we're both the largest and uh, one of the fastest growing ever open source foundations. And so I did want to uh, just give a little bit of background on that and then share uh, some lessons that we've uh, learned in an approach that might be useful to the open source networking community. Uh, just as a look at that growth, this is um, looking at Google Trends, so what people search for in Google. And you can see that uh, three years ago when we launched, uh, Kubernetes was quite low, right, with Docker Swarm and Mesos, OpenStack, and Cloud Foundry. And other than uh, the fact that people really like to take that week off between Christmas and New Year's, we've had this very steady growth um, over three years, and it uh, continues today. And then on the right side, uh, you can see on WeChat search, and uh, China has been an enormous market for us. We have a huge number of members and users and uh, uh, certified versions and such, and uh, there as well, we've just had a, a huge amount of interest and growth. Uh, this is a kind of a complicated chart, but it is just a way of looking at the velocity of open source projects. So the size of the bubble is how many unique developers are working on a project, how high up it is, is how many commits it's had in the last year, how far to the right shows uh, how many uh, issues and, and pull requests. And you can see that depending on how you count, uh, Kubernetes is the second or third highest velocity project in open source, uh, just behind Linux. And um, probably over the last three years, the program where CNCF has generated the most value and um, has had the biggest impact on our ecosystem is certified Kubernetes. And this is a way, uh, it's an automated testing system and a, a process behind that to ensure that of uh, Kubernetes that you purchase from different vendors or use in a hosted cloud environment or just download uh, the, the pure upstream uh, version are all compatible, that they all support the same APIs. And so uh, we're really proud of the fact that we have 83 certified Kubernetes partners, and uh, we've actually collaborated quite closely with uh, LF Networking on the OVP certification program that was announced this week, which in fact is using a lot of the same processes and documents uh, and such. Okay, so um, that's a, a canned history of CNCF. What have we learned and uh, what are three ideas that would apply over to open source networking? The first one is a loose coupling. And this is the idea that um, all of the projects in CNCF do work together. Uh, they, they add value, they solve related problems, but they're not welded to each other. And so different enterprises select different projects that uh, they find useful. Different platform providers glue them together or, or, or 
uh, bundle them together in different ways. And I want to emphasize that this leaves space for innovation. It lets people focus on the areas that they're interested in, uh, where their talents are, and it's closely related to another CNCF principle that we're not the kingmakers. And so explicitly, when we pick a project and we say, okay, this is a great container runtime, or this is a great service mesh, or uh, this is a good tool for service discovery, that is not the end word, the final story uh, for CNCF and what we're endorsing. And we explicitly have a policy that we can have, we can host multiple projects in the same box. So for example, we support multiple container runtimes today, and we'll probably see more of that in the future as more projects uh, come into CNCF. So uh, we do think that that loose coupling adds um, a lot of value and allows innovation to occur at different rates uh, in different parts of our ecosystem. Second idea is to minimize toil. And so we really see developer productivity as one of the most important constraints that we're trying to optimize for. And so that means that we, to the degree possible, provide just a variety of different services to our projects that help make the developers more productive and uh, makes it easier for them to collaborate. Um, in particular, we're perfectly happy to use commercial services to do this when those work well. Um, as an example, I believe Kubernetes now has the largest um, Slack, uh, public Slack uh, implementation in the world. It has uh, thousands of new users every week. Uh, it's just kind of a crazy process to support, but we also use uh, Zoom video calls and then uh, publish all of those to YouTube, uh, hopefully within a day or so, so that uh, people who couldn't make the call or who need to go back later and review have access to that. We use GitHub, we use open mailing lists, um, we use a lot of Google Docs, and uh, interestingly, we don't mandate what those tools are to the project. We certainly have some defaults that we recommend, but we're constantly open to trying new ones and to accepting the fact that different projects often want to use different tools, and, and we support them in doing that. Now, I want to particularly call out the role of continuous integration. A key driver of the Kubernetes project's success and robustness has been the level of investment that we've made. Uh, every weekday, we run over 10,000 CI jobs. Every time someone opens a pull request, it runs that CI job. And then in addition, every two days, we run a new scalability test of 150,000 containers across 5,000 virtual machines. Now, the smaller projects are not at that scale, but they all ro rely on uh, CI platforms as well. And interestingly, we don't really mandate or even have a preferred one. Different projects uh, use different CI providers, and we're happy to support them on that. And then uh, the third one I would say is the value of marketing a vision. And so uh, Kubernetes is the anchor tenant of CNCF. Uh, and an incredibly important project, but we do try and share a larger vision about uh, what cloud native means, about a way of reducing costs and improving resiliency, and most importantly, in increasing developer velocity. And so um, two examples of this is that uh, we don't try and say that the CNCF way or hosting using all CNCF projects is the only way of successfully being a cloud native enterprise or uh, to, for this audience, a cloud native telco. We have some recommended uh, options, but uh, we also create this diagram. Uh, can you just raise your hand if you've seen the cloud native landscape before? Uh, this has been described to me as uh, useful, overwhelming, and the hellscape. Uh, interestingly, the same person uh, did two of those. Uh, it is an overwhelming document. There's a, a cool interactive tool at the top that you can go to on your phone or your computer, L for landscape.cncf.io, that actually lets you research each of these projects and products. You can see that the gray ones are uh, closed source products, the white ones are open source. But we are trying to make a statement here that it's not actually that uh, we're making the world complicated. We're the map maker. The world itself is complicated. There's a lot 
lot of different options. And so then uh, the other diagram that we think is incredibly valuable is what we call the cloud native trail map. And uh, this is really designed to be the front side of the document, the landscape on the back. And I will say you can walk over to the CNCF booth after this session and, uh, and pick up a print copy here. But um, in my experience, I don't think there's actually an enterprise that is using all 21 of the CNCF graduated and incubating projects and nothing else, no commercial products, uh, no other open source projects. That in reality, people are mixing and matching uh, to a huge degree. And what we hope is that uh, an enterprise, a telco, will look at the CNCF project, will evaluate it and try and understand its strengths and weaknesses before making their decision. But there's no obligation to, uh, it, that loose coupling is a, a really key thought here. So those were the, the three big ideas, loose coupling, minimized toil, market vision. Uh, these are all things that open source networking organizations like Elf Networking have already begun to do, um, but could perhaps put more resources into. And then uh, finally, I do want to just mention two other CNCF activities that might be of interest to this community. Uh, one is an area that we've uh, been working with Elf Networking and others on. It's called the Cloud Native Network Function Testbed. This is a uh, project, it's open source, it's available right now if you'd like to participate, where we took some open source network functions out of the ONAP project and repackaged them, uh, not in virtual machines, but in containers, run them on OpenStack and on top of Kubernetes on identical bare metal servers that have been very generously donated to us by the bare metal hosting company Packet. And uh, you can just Google for this CNF testbed and see uh, an online presentation, a lot of detail about it. And then we are having monthly phone calls where we're talking about collaboration. There's um, some aspects of how we're making this perform today that uh, they, everything is automated. It's all in the open source repo, but I would describe some of it, uh, some of it as being out of band that it, uh, it is done in a more manual ways. And uh, we're interested in having all of that be automated into Kubernetes. And then finally, um, I'd be remiss not to mention CNCF's conferences. Uh, we host KubeCon Cloud Native Con. Our event in Barcelona on May 20th is uh, expecting over 10,000 attendees. It's going to be the largest open source developer conference in history. Uh, that's up from uh, 8,000. You can see our growth here over the last um, three years from 500 when we got started up to 8,000 in Seattle. We'll then be in Shanghai, uh, June 24th, 26th. That's gonna be joint with the Open Source Summit and uh, we'll have a lot of networking content. And then uh, we're expecting an even bigger event uh, in San Diego, November 18th to 21st. And so um, I hope that many of you will uh, be there and uh, have your, your colleagues go there. And uh, I'll stop there. Thank you all very much for your time.